All right, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Nine Years Podcast, our final edition of 2021. I am Nick Draper. I am joined, as always, by the face of the BBC Sport website, Mr Stuart Deakins, and delighted to say Mark Robinson has joined us. And Mark, first of all, absolutely thank you so much for giving up the time to speak to us. Always much appreciated. No How problem. are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, actually. Yeah, so um, today's our sort of day off from training. So it was nice. Got a little bit of shopping done. So it was nice to get in the Christmas spirit a little bit. So, um, yeah, all good. All good. Whereabouts did you get shopping done? Was it busy or have people yeah, retreated? Popped, yeah, no, I popped into Wimbledon. It was very busy, to be fair. Yeah, it was really busy. So, yeah. No, Claire's done most of it for me. So it was just, it, it was nice to just get out and do a little bit. So otherwise you feel like you kind of, completely detached with it because it's all football 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 so yeah it was nice to have half a day getting some stuff for the girls and that we are recording this on wednesday evening listeners just to pick you in the picture a little bit and <laughs> um christmas christmas day falls on the saturday which means our fixture boxing day falls on the sunday this time of year with games coming at different times random how's it impact on routines you say not been in training today i, I assume that's a that's a standard sort of Wednesday thing, is it? But yeah, you just you just look so no, our normal structure is in Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, obviously play set Saturday or Tuesday. So we always tend to be off Wednesdays. <clears throat> so you but you obviously look at that and check it that it's going to fall in place with what you're doing. So, you know, we felt playing Sunday doesn't really make any difference. Um and obviously because the game got called off on Saturday, we we trained hard Monday and Tuesday. So it was it was fine having the Wednesday off, and then we're back into tomorrow and Friday, Thursday and Friday. Um, Stu, you're going to know more than me. The um, so it was Portsmouth, wasn't it? Was that called off on the Friday? It was called off on the Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we found out. Yeah, Friday, um, quite late on the Friday that it was going to be called off. So um, which was a shame because the lads were chomping at the bit to um to, to have a game. So it was a shame, but um, it you know it is what it is. So um just you, you just there's no point wasting energy sort of getting you know because the lads were a bit upset by it because they were raring to go but I just said you know you can't waste your energy on it. it is what it is and um just need to get ready for the next one so we were talking beforehand Robbo just talking about obviously training and it looks like now with the the sort of Premier League and, and stuff like that they sort of the old protocols have come in um yeah. obviously you were saying that that's obviously impacts us quite a bit because of the setup we have at a training ground and that so what what sort of measures have we gone down have gone back to is it what it was back when it was behind closed doors yeah i mean <clears throat> i mean to be honest tim and chris who lead chris leads our sports science and tim obviously the medical they've always been really hot and stringent on everything we've done so we've always tested every day anyway but obviously when things were a bit more relaxed we're all in the building together um but we, we've always been testing um, and, and that's a big part of what we do, Stu, obviously, because it's a big part mm -hmm. of our culture, the, the, you know, the way the lads are together, etc. Um, so now we, we can't have that. The, the boys literally turn up. Um, we meet down at the training ground. We train and they go home. You know, if someone needs um, a strapping or something, they have to go in individually. So they're all tested before they come in, but they literally get tested separately. We go and train and then they go home. So it's, it's a shame because, you know, a big part of what we do is how we interact on a day-to-day -day basis but you just have to find ways to get around things and um you know it, it, it is what it is so you just have to deal with it and you know keep everyone positive really have you done anything it's obviously difficult this time of year um you know players are like like all of us you know normal, normal people want to do normal things yeah have, have you have, have the club sort of said to them to be careful who they're mixing with or just common sense because you can't you know they've got to be able to enjoy themselves as much as they can as well haven't they yeah i mean the, we we cancelled the christmas party and their christmas party and they were great to be fair um you know because obviously they're looking forward to it because they got a great team spirit but they they, they fully understood so we cancelled that and they, they understood that. So, and it is just that constant message of just asking them to think about what they're doing and be sensible. But to be honest, Stu, they're so desperate to play games that they're doing that anyway. You know, they, yeah. they, don't, they don't want to get tested positive because they're, they're desperate to play. So a lot of it looks after themselves. It's just making sure we don't slip into any silly little bad habits where you just forget things, you know. So um, as I said, Tim and Chris, who lead us on that stuff, 
uh, a constant constant reminders to us which is how it needs to be like you know they, they're forever going sorry but you need you know but you want it to be like that because we get wrapped up in the football and sometimes you know you you, you forget things so they're on at us all the time and touch wood you know it's it's working you know we've had very limited cases and to be fair it's down to to Tim and Chris and what a tight ship they run so you know we have had very limited ca cases so hopefully I haven't put um kiss of death on it but up till now we, we compared to what it seems a lot of clubs have been we've been very limited I'm just going to quickly say before Nick comes back in um my son's part of the junior don so thank you very much for the card um no. that was really good and I have to say that the video Robbo absolutely <laughs> loved it um yes. you can see Alex Woodyard loved it all <laughs> <laughs> but it, do you know what it's, it's nice touches because those little things you know in terms of that connection with players and stuff like that isn't it yeah um, it's yeah. that small little thing. So, you know, just to say from my point of view, thank you, because that was no, that was quite a good thing. I always say to the lads, it's, you know, actions do talk louder than words, and it's very simple to put a signature on something or whatever. But I think, you know, when you see, you know, they, they actually go to some effort to to try and get the message across, that that's absolutely key. And that's what I, I say to them, you know, you, you've got never underestimate how much making a bit of more effort, you know, means to the fans and I think you know they fully get that I mean there's so many things you said there that I want to I want to pick up on um where do I start I start possibly actually to go on a massively a philosophical detour but that element of the club in terms of the players <clears throat> and staff and coming together as a community and doing things for the community something that you've been really huge on since since day one um do you think we sometimes forget that 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 do you think we get we get too focused? This will tie into something I want to speak to you about later as well. Actually, mm. too focused on results in, in terms of the first team. Do you think there's a huge bigger picture that sometimes that we lose a little bit of sight of? Um, you can do. I mean, it's, it's understandable, Nick, because fundamentally that's what as fans, yeah. that's what guides us is the league table. But interestingly, you know, I think you do have to keep looking as a club. Are we growing as a club? You know, and what what does that look like to to you as fans and to to myself? And yeah, I think it can get lost a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't ever want to be judged just on how great the players are in the community if we're not we're not a good football team. But I do think it all goes hand in hand. Um, you know, and I, I, what I love is it's not like what we're doing. You know, getting the players and building that attachment with the players and fans. It's it's not hindering what we do. If you get it right, it should only grow what you do anyway. So I think the the feeling I'm getting is the fans are really recognising that, that we, we the players are desperate to build this attachment. You know, I think that that's being recognised and we we really want to be part of this community club and be something special and different. But fundamentally as well, we want to be a massive success on the pitch. But I think, you know, if you get both things right, they do end up going hand in hand because what I felt recently is... The fans are even going the extra mile, if that makes sense, because I feel that they're really feeling the attachment with the players. And I mean, the last few games, Nick, it's, you know, and I'll keep saying it, but honestly, the support has been, you know, I've, I've obviously been at the club 16, 70 years. I've gone to my fair share to other away games, etc. But the, the support has been off the scale. I mean, Accrington, it, it, it was like when they, they've got to stop at some point singing. You know what I mean? It was freezing, it was cold, it was horrible. And I just kept... There was one point where the game, because the, the ball wasn't on the pitch that often sometimes, and I found myself just looking and thinking, well, they've they got to stop singing soon, but they literally, for, for whatever it was, 96 minutes didn't stop. And then they took that into the Wiccan game as well. And um, so, as I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer that you grow that and, and we just grow as a club and go on to be massively successful anyway. Seems a long time ago now, actually, those Accrington and Wickham games. And you mentioned there about the frustration of having Portsmouth called off because the players really want to get yeah. playing games and carry on the good form that we've had over the past month or so. Um, Wickham was our last fixture, if I've got that right. Yeah. How many times has that, how often has that ever happened to you in the past where you've taken the lead in injury time and had it snatched away? Um, I, was trying, I was trying to think because I was. Because the other day I was just I was thinking about since I got the job and looking at the games, I think the club are due to do a bit of a review, you know, mid-season review how it's gone, you know, and you think of games where we've got last-minute winners or last-minute equalisers, and yeah, you know, I can't remember. Obviously, 
Gillingham, they got the they got the mm. very very late equaliser, but we hadn't scored. No, I, I can't remember us scoring that late and then that happening. No, and I, and it was it it, it was terrible because I, I honestly sometimes when you're on the line you you feel things and you feel things are a little bit out of your control and you can maybe see a goal coming and you're thinking, oh, what can I do to help the lads? But when we went when we took the lead, honestly, I I didn't dream that they'd get the equaliser because we we seemed in such a good place. And I didn't, I, I don't think anyone saw it coming. I think that's why it hurt so much, you know, why it hurt the players so much. So no, it was, it was my first experience and I hope I don't have too many to be <laughs> honest because um, that last 20 seconds, we've run over in ahead a few times, which isn't healthy, but you keep thinking, oh, what could we have done to just kept the ball at the other end for another 20 seconds or 25 seconds? I think when you look at the um, the fixtures, um, especially when you saw Accrington and Wickham back to back, Accrington yeah. midweek, Wickham on a Saturday, I, I won't lie, I, I looked at it and thought, you know, we pick up a couple of points, I'd be more than happy with that. Um, Performance-wise, though, how happy are you with it? Because if you look at it with Atkinson and, and Wickham, probably more Wickham than Atkinson, but big, physical, strong sides. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we struggled against that, sometimes trying to match them physically when not playing our own game. But it felt like Wickham, we basically said, we're going to play this way. We're not going to try and out-battle you. We're going to work and, you know, break and that. Were you happy how that went? Because actually our strengths nullified them to a certain extent. Yeah. And that's what you look at, Stu. When I when I talk about performances and people go, oh yeah, but it's only the result that matters, and it's not. You you always want to look at, of course, of course, long term it does, but you have to look at the performance because you can only tell if you're growing and getting better by actually looking at the performance. And the the thing that was so pleasing in those two games, even if for some reason we're drawn against Aki or what, you know, it was so clear that we we dealt with what they threw at us so much better. You know, um, you know, you can't account in football. Someone might smash running from 25 yards and you go, oh. but the maturity of the performance is what, is what was so pleasing because you look at that and you go, no, we are growing. We are understanding, you know, um, and, and, and they showed that levels of maturity that, that you're looking for. You know, when you've got the squad that we've got and the young squad, that's what made it so, so pleasing was just the levels of maturity. I mean, I felt Accrington, you know, we never really ever looked in trouble, you know, despite the conditions. And, you know, that's the first time I've ever managed a game against Wickham. And it's, you know, it's difficult. We had a great start to the game, as you saw. But when they start doing what they do and they get in a bit of a rhythm, I think it was 35 minutes in. And I said to Rob, I feel like I've been standing here for about two hours. You know, it's it's constant. But the way, <laughs> the, the, way the lads stood up to it and then, like you said, you know, you could see them trying to get that first pass away so we could get into some rhythm. And there was kind of 15, 20 minutes where we couldn't quite get that rhythm. We were trying to, I remember a ball went into Woody and he tried to nod a little clever header down so we could get some rhythm and it kind of wasn't happening. And I was just trying to get across to look, keep doing that. Once you find your first pass, you can earn them. And what was lovely, the end of that first half, we got that rhythm and we finished the half really, really strongly and started to, you know, open them up and we took that into the start of the second half, which is when we really should have put the game to bed, to be fair. We had three or four really good chances, you know. But um, yeah, it was it was just that level of maturity where you look and you go, well, this is exciting because we, we definitely look like we're starting to grow. And I think we also earned respect as well because you could tell with Gareth Ainsworth at the end, you know, didn't didn't say we didn't, you know, he said we more than deserved the draw. Uh, yeah. on that side it, and it felt it felt in a way that we sort of nullified Wickham because they were uh, in terms of our, our you know on the break and stuff like that um, we looked you know I, I look at the the Cheltenham game and that's probably one of the best attacking performances I've seen in terms of I was off my seat there was so you know in terms of it wasn't just a basic passing there was a lot of variety wasn't there and stuff like that yeah. um, so performance wise you, you must be pleased you know last five games and since Pompey even in the Pompey game, we, we performed really well. Yeah, we did. And we we were disappointed we didn't come away with a point at Pompey. And I talked to him about that. You know, don't ever disrespect a point, you know, because th those points add up. You know, um, I said, you know, you get you get 46 draws at the season. You, you're not that far off staying up. So don't ever disrespect. <laughs> not that we ever want that, but you know what I'm saying? Don't, mm -hmm. don't ever disrespect the point. You know, you're away from home. Realise. I know you always want to win every single game, but don't disrespect the point. But I think you're right in terms of how we we dealt with those, the physicality because I'm a, I, I keep talking to the lads about not fighting fire with fire because, you know, if you're playing against a side who are big, strong, physical, 
you've got to be cleverer than that because unless we go and recruit players who are even stronger and more physical, it's well, where are you going with this? So there, I think I believe there are other ways you can deal with that. Obviously, you have to stand up and be counted where it where it matters in around the penalty area. But I believe on the rest of the pitch, you can you can nullify what they do by by being better on the ball, by wanting the ball, and at the same time. I said to some of the lads, does it really matter that you're not winning a some goal out wide when you can pick up the second ball and then start playing? And it's trying to get them to, because I think sometimes, you know, we have this thing where we, we've got to win every header when, you know, you've got a five foot eight fullback trying to beat a six foot two wide player. It's like, well, you're not going to win it. So just let's be cuter, let's be cleverer because it's how, it's how you win the battle. So you might not win the initial battle, but you might win the battle overall because you find cleverer ways of, of dealing with it. And then, and as I said, when it gets to both penalty areas, it's very different. That's where you've got to be stand up and be counted, which I thought the lads did really, really well for the big part. But I think the way we want to play and the kind of players we've got, that's what we've got to find. Like you said, is that now to be a little bit cuter, a little bit cleverer, um, but still be really competitive and, and impose ourselves on the opposition. <clears throat> Your emphasis has always very much been on what we do and how we impose our style of play and what we want to do on the opposition mm -hmm. when it comes to a game like Wickham and when you also have another curveball thrown at you in terms of selection problems have to change the back four around and things like that is yeah. there is there much time spent on the training ground just preparing for the for the different threats that are going to come away from the different oppositions or do you very much keep it very basic and really just focus on how we approach things well what, what we started doing recently more recently you know, because if, if I throw everything that I believe in Nick all at once, it can be quite overwhelming for players, especially if you've done, you know, with the more senior lads who have done things a certain way for, for nine, ten years. The younger ones are a little bit different, especially the academy lads, because they know me. So but what we've been doing more recently is the lads have been taking ownership of analysis. So where we used to sit down together and make it as interactive as possible, I felt that they were at the point now where they're taking a lot more ownership. So what we do we put together like a 20, 25 minute clip package for them, but we make it flow as much as possible. So they look like they're watching a game of the opposition and they actually sit down and do the analysis themselves. So what we then do, we leave them alone and we go in and they present to us. So we've obviously already seen it in our head and what we're thinking, but they present to us what they see as their threats, how we can hurt them, et cetera, within our structure. So they, so what we're trying to get them to do is look at how we play, what we do and is there anything that they do within our structure and how we play that could cause us problems? And if so, how will we deal with it? And, and what that does, Nick, they, they feel like they're, well, they're taking control of the game plan, then, you know, and it's up to us to then if we see other things to talk to them about it and bring it to their attention. And then we take that onto the pitch. But fundamentally, the, whole, the, the basis of the training will always be about us. And then we just work on those things they, that they potentially identified. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can't lie. When when I lost Dan Chopper and I knew I only had one centre back, that was um, <laughs> your brains whirring. But but I'm a big, big believer. You know, sometimes you find out a lot about people in a bit of adversity, and I thought that was what was so pleasing. I thought Nesta was outstanding, and um, you know that again, you could look and go, well, that's added another string to our bow potentially. You you look at Nesta in there, and you go, well, if we come up against this again. You've got someone else who can do that. Or if we look to plan a back three, for example, you know, that might be something else that you'd look at. So um, so that that's the extra layer we've added on is that they're taking a lot more responsibility now. But it's always fundamentally about us. It's just because you, you look at a lot of what we do and it should look after what the opposition do anyway. There's always going to be something that they might do that you might need to just spend a little bit of extra work on. And also, in a way, Robo, Nesta looked very comfortable. Um, mm. You know, in terms of sometimes if you've got someone playing out position, you you sometimes naturally look at that position. But actually, he he just didn't do anything that made it look like it was uncomfortable. Um, mm. And the interesting thing was we we interviewed Ru, um, Jack Rodoni um, on the Sunday after it, and he was like, "Yeah, I knew he could do it." it was yeah. a, a, such a lot, and that that that's not surprised me, but it made me realise that he had he had full um, confidence from the team. That yeah. he could play there. There was no worry about that. Was it something that you suggested to him? Did he did he sort of say I can play there? I can play there, yeah. Robbo? Uh, well, I called him because I toyed of playing with a back three. I can't, you know, because I thought about playing possibly a back three. 
but then I just I pulled him in and said, look, Nessa, how do you feel about it? And he was just like, no problem. Um, you know, they're, they're in a really good place at the moment, Stu. And he, he just sort of went, no, no problem at all. I can do it. And, you know, as a coach, you want to hear that. That gives you belief. And then you just get to work then on 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 looking at how, you know, because you think, well, are they going to focus on him mm. and, you know, target him? So if they are, how are we going to deal with that? And then you can just look at that on the training ground. Because I said, it's not always when the ball's away from the goal, winning the first contact's not not always important as long as we come away with the ball in the second contact is key. And if you watch the game back, the, the lads did that really, really well most of the time. Pat Nesta was quite so willing to, to step in there. I'm going to put that down to the culture that you've created within the squad. And there was something you, you've spoken about in the past about players being accountable to each other, something else, something else related to the culture that you've put in. And how if you have a training session and things aren't going well, players need to have the confidence to call each other out if they think they're not putting the effort in or whatever it is. Do you think, did football lose that? Because I think going back 30 odd years, I think you actually saw this on the pitch at times. You'd see teammates having real goes at each other and yeah. pointing out. Do you think we lost that in, in football or is that a societal thing as a whole? No, you're spot on, Nick. And so when I talk about this stuff, I th- you know, I really hate the fact that people possibly think I'm trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not. What I'm trying to do is replace the characteristics that have probably been lost in modern, you know, in society. Um, you know, so I think I think lads now have got so many great things that possibly I didn't have when I was younger. But there are certain things that have been lost a little bit. You know, uh, I think people struggle to be honest with each other a little bit you know that they were probably a little bit more fragile in in certain ways because life's changed a little bit you know um you know lads you think about you know the days of having a Saturday job and and a paper round and all those little things that possibly give you a little bit more robustness and that growing up have gone and so it's it's just looking at that and 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 you know I think when back when I was playing, you know, I'd have full-blooded rows with players. You know, <laughs> there's a couple of times I look back, I did things that I'm not proud of, but at the time you did it and afterwards you were mates, you know, but, and that, you definitely, that's been lost. So it's really looking at that and going, well, how can we get that back? You know, because you need that. You do need people who put demands on each other, high demands on each other. And at the same time, you know, they're going to react to that and realise that it's for the good of the team and they're not going to sulk and get the um, and they realise that everyone's doing it because we've all got the same purpose. So, you know, when I talk about this stuff and these these ideas we have and different things we do, it is just to to kind of help the lads have those behaviours that possibly have got lost a little bit, definitely. It's interesting you say it, Nick, because I, I always think sometimes, you know, if you can see the goal and you see a team literally just staring at the floor, you sometimes just think, have they not that they care, do you know what I mean? But why yeah. are they not got the um and and it's interesting you just talk about players and we go at each other. I've just pulled back to, to Bruce Gravelo and Steve McMahon having a, 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 exactly a, what a I pushy have, match yeah. in the in a Merseyside derby. And yeah. from player point of view, don't get me wrong, I don't want to see them striking each other, but actually that does sort of show a little bit of care, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, that means something. But yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. I was just thinking back. Um so and, and the other thing is well Nick is you know, have an environment where people believe they can be themselves because that's a massive part of it as well. So, you know, we have this big thing of why would you want to work anywhere unless you can be your true authentic self? And part of that and opening the players up there where they feel that they can be themselves and they get to know each other is a big part of that because then they feel more comfortable in doing it. The biggest example I can give it to you is when I did the youth team, you remember Senna McKillop, who, yeah. you probably remember Senna was the captain and Nez, Nez Beliki. I mean, they were best yeah. mates. Now, if you look back at when Watford equalised, um, no, went 2-1 up against us, you know, Senan literally has got old and there's his ear and he's literally giving him a full volley in the ear. You know, this is his, his mate. Um, they worked in Nez's mum and dad's chip shop together. You know, they're good mates, but he's <laughs> absolutely getting into him. And then Nez went on to get, you know, the assist for the, the equaliser. We went on and win. But... You know, the reason they feel comfortable to do that is because they they know each other, you know, and and they know how they're going to react and they feel comfortable to do that. And he knows Nez isn't going to crumble. Do you know what I mean? So there's there's so many different parts that go into it, you know, but um, but yeah, fundamentally, that's that's why we do these different things. 
you talk about culture and processes for the players. What are your processes and your routines for you? How do you approach your day to make sure that you're being successful in what you do? Um, I keep a diary with lots of little sort of sayings, like reset little buttons, because mm-hmm. you know, football's such an emotional game, Nick, and it's, you know, and it's so easy to be knee-jerk, you know, because you're mm-hmm. we're all human sometimes, and, you know, it's so easy to be knee-jerk, and if someone's not behaving in a certain way, you know, lose your head. So I have little little daily sayings, and, I've, you know, I've got this diary I'll keep, and they're just like little reset buttons for me to remind me that no one's trying to cheese me off on purpose or, or whatever they just are what they are <laughs> they're growing and they're learning so there's that um steve salis is is a help for me you know if i need to i can just ring steve um and he's kind of i just he just listens to me really talks things mm-hmm. through which is which is which is really good and um i've got to be honest and you probably know i've had ben ryan come in as well and um ben is the guy who led fiji to the the Olympic gold in the rugby seven. So Ben and Steve together have just been really good because they 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 just listen, that they know all the things that we're putting in place and trying to achieve. And Ben's very of the same mindset, you know. And um sometimes in football when you don't think you've got what you've deserved, you know, because that that's the nature of the game. That's why we love it. You don't always get what you warrant in terms of points. You know, Ben Ben is also great because he's a big believer in these kind of behaviors and that's why I, I trust it because he's he's worked with big 16 17 stone rugby guys and he and he talks in the same way you know in terms of getting the best out of people and um and they're very honest with me as well you know that they would be honest and if they if they feel that you know that they're very comfortable to say to me if if they think that something's off track or, or something like that so it's just surrounding yourself with good people and and and, re- and reflecting really but I've had to be better at that because I kind of I tend to keep things to myself a bit and feel that I can deal with everything. So it's been good that I've 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 got those two that I can I can talk to, and obviously even Rob, even though Rob's young, you know I've known Rob 15 years now, you know so he's he's you know we've got the sort of relationship where where we're we're very honest, and I think that's the key really, Nick, is just knowing that everyone's honest with each other. Mm. You know, um, it's absolutely vital that you can be honest with each other and you don't have a hierarchy you have people you know you people feel comfortable in being able to say things to you um which is what we've got so in terms of where we're at now what's the uh what are your sort of immediate targets for for the season on the pitch i know i spoke about earlier about differences between results and process and all these things but at the end of the day as you say does boil down to results so you've got immediate targets do you yeah. look at it in that regard yeah we we, we i mean fundamentally it, what we our, our target is always just to come in every day and, and be the best we can be and then we honestly believe the points to look after itself um so even when we had that little blip um you know when we lost will and ollie and and pk etc and there was a little dip and that's no disrespect to the players who come in it's just you know when you lose we're not we haven't got much experience so when you lose that bit of experience it was always going to be tougher um but again we did we didn't panic so it's just that's the way we look at things is just come in and be the best we can be every single day and the points to look after itself we feel i think as a group we probably think we're three four points short of what we should be but i'm sure every manager feels like that there's probably points you've left out there so you know we we just we know that we can climb the table we're fully confident that we can we can climb the table um, but you'll only do that if you, you have complete clarity, complete focus on what you're doing. And, and you don't, and when things are good, you don't think that's it, we've cracked it. And when things are bad, you don't think everything's falling apart because it's never, it's never either. All it is is just work in progress, you know. And I know that sounds a bit boring, but, <laughs> but that's what it is. You know, it's, it's for the fans to get excited and the players to have their great moments with the fans. But for me, it's, it's for me and their staff to say stay really level-headed and and you know us keep climbing to where we we know we want to go in the future it's interesting actually because there was a good interview with uh luke mccormick uh on the official side that's done today and i found it a really interesting interview um so i think when he come in i think everyone was really really excited about um his ability what he'd done at bristol rovers 
Um, and I think he showed glimpses of that. Um, yeah. Frustrating sometimes, but you could always see that there was something there that yeah. would, you know, once he once he hit it, he would, you know, he was he would get consistency. It's interesting what he was saying about training and when he come in, the processes were different. He wasn't making excuses, but he was saying, look, what I'm being asked to do is totally different and the processes. Yeah. It was interesting what he said. He sort of said, like, you can train all week, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that result is going to, you know, the result of the training is going to happen on that Saturday. It might be two weeks ahead, but you've got to keep working on that side of it. And I found it really interesting because if you look at Luke McCormick's form at the moment, he's on fire, isn't he? This, you know, yeah. this he's, he's now starting to show, but it's taken a little while. Um, were, you, were you surprised how long it's taken Luke? Or is that just simply, it's so different to what he was used to? It does take, the, the process takes a little longer. You never know because, you know, until they're in the building, obviously I met Luke and I spent a lot of time with him before I signed and was desperate to sign him because you can see that you only have to speak to the lad to know how infectious yeah. he is. Um, but until they're in the building working, you, you don't know exactly what you're getting. So when Luke come in, it was very clear. Luke is just very, just loves football, just want, wants to turn up, wants to train, play football, talk about football go, and go out. That's it. Just, well, we just play football. Gaffer, and that's what we do and we you know so mm. when I'm talking about no we do this and we need to do this you can see him like looking at me thinking why don't we just play football you know um <laughs> it, it'll look after itself so we 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 had I wouldn't I wouldn't say we're struggling but there was a lot of you know when you're taking on board a lot of information that's why I just said to Nick sometimes I you know I have to drip feed things in because there's other mm. things I want to do that will take time so you know, when you get a little bit of an overload like that, sometimes it can be quite a lot to take on board, you know, as, as well as the tactical stuff I want to get right in terms of how we press, etc. So I think it was a, you know, there was a spell when I could see, because you've got to remember, he's come, he's come to a new club. Um, in many ways, he knows that he was kind of quite a big signing for us. You know, everyone's saying, well, we signed someone from Chelsea. This has yeah. never happened. He knew that. So this is why I'm so massive on the mental side of things, because he's human. He, he's not stupid. No matter how much confidence he's got in his own ability, there's a big level of expectancy. So he's come into training. I remember one of his early conversations, he said to me, wow, the young lads here are good, aren't they, Gaffer? Now, I know that's him going, well, actually, like the, the rest of the players here are good. I'm, I'm kind of, you can, you can just read into yeah. things. That there's, there's, there's an expectancy. And with that, you know, in his head, he's probably thinking, well, I, I need to be knocking in two goals every game here to, to people <laughs> to think I'm a success. So there's all these things going on in the head, as well as a new club. He's moving into a new house, settling in. But obviously, I see him in training and I see the quality. You know, when he's relaxed in training, you see the quality he's got. So you you know it's going to come. So I had a meeting with him. I can't remember. It was a good, good couple of months ago. So I, I had his stats and I could tell that he was a little bit frustrated, feel that he should be doing more, getting more. So I brought him in and I just said to, I wrote down his figures, his stats at Bristol Rovers. And I wrote down his stats here at Wimbledon up until whatever games we were in, probably about 11 or 12 games in. But I didn't yeah. put anything by him. I just wrote the numbers. So I just wrote the numbers for Bristol Rovers and the numbers for us, but nothing else, just numbers. And I just said to him, what do you think those numbers are and what these numbers are here now? So it was, it was goals and assists. And he, I don't know, I don't know. So then after a while, he clocked the Bristol Rovers. He went, oh, is that my goals and assists at Bristol Rovers? And I went, yeah. And I said, what do you think that is at Wimbledon? He went, that's my goals and assists now. And I went, right. So he went, I'm at 80% of what I've, I did at Bristol Rovers already at Wimbledon. I said, but what's your perception <laughs> of how you're doing? He went, I think I'm way off it. I said, so you're not. So your perception of what you, where you think you are is never, ever where you think you mm. actually are. So I said, you're literally nearly hit your stats for Bristol Rovers. So at the end of last year, you got voted man of, player of the year, countless clubs wanted you, and you're already nearly hitting those stats already. And all this, and you could see it took a, a weight off him and he understood yeah. that. So, and, and then, then I said to him, I said, by December, you'll be flying. He went, December? Why have I got to wait till December? I said, that's mine. That, 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 that. I said, because sometimes I said, maybe it'd be sooner, but in my head, by well, December, you'd be flying. So we had a bit of laugh about it the other day, you know. So, and, and they're young men, you know, yeah. and I know people probably think, why does he keep going on about you? But 
truly, how many young players actually do come in and smash it from the word go? You know, we remember them because of the Roonies and yeah. whatever. But let's be honest, they're so few and far between, you know, and it's yeah. like any, any player, they, it takes time. It takes time. And, um, you know, and as you said, he's, he's feeling absolutely comfortable now. Now that all the stuff that he used to have to do, that he found a bit overload, now it's just a way of life to him. And I think that come across in the interview, didn't it? You could see that. Whereas yeah. at first he was coming in thinking, oh, I'm thinking about this and we do that and we do that. Now it's just life. He just comes in and that's what, what he does now. So, you know. Yeah. He just seemed very settled in terms of his, how settled he was. You can tell his performances at the moment are outstanding. Yeah. Um, and that's what we all could see, wasn't it? And that sort of side of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I sort of, obviously, we're going to wrap up soon, by the way. Um, I'm guessing you've looked at the fixtures. <laughs> We've got some hell of a... I looked at it, not not to worry, because I'm sure you know it all, but 17 games until the end of February. Yeah. It's, it's a hell of a lot, isn't it? Um, yeah. What what are you... Obviously, January window's coming up. What we what thoughts have we got in terms of can we strengthen the squad? Can we get more numbers in? What are you thinking? Yeah, well, you, obviously, you know, we 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 lost Aaron yesterday, um, Aaron Presley, yeah. which, which is which was a blow. Um, we we don't know until <laughs> until the scan tomorrow. We don't know how long it'll be, but um, but so we got we got a plan for that. Yeah, so it's just looking at the 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 possibilities really. You know, do we bring some lads back off loan, um, which which could happen, and then also you know, Joe and Will telling me if we can possibly bring someone in. But what 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 I'm, I mean, the good thing is we Will Will's on his way back. Um, he trained with Shay. They both looked really really good. They we had a little in house game. They both did twenty minutes and looked excellent. So we're getting those two back. Um, we got the site. We took Eggley in, which I think everyone, yeah, you know, I think he's going to be. He's going to be a big player for us, uh, you know. So I look at him as a new signing. Um, so it's just assessing. But what I don't want to do is, I, I, I'm a coach, you know, and fundamentally my job is to make everyone in the building better. That that's what I'm there to do. So January for me, I think you can have a massive less, lack of focus in January because, you know. I look at it and everyone feels like, oh, we've got, we, we have to sign something. If we're not signing some, someone, we're failing. Now, I look at it and go, well, if in January I'm having to sign five players, I've already failed because we obviously didn't get the recruitment right in, in the first place. Um, so if I'm panicking, going, well, I need to sign five players, then I've already failed. So I honestly believe keeping your focus, believing in the group you've got, and I fully believe in the group you've, we've got, and keep making everyone better, including myself and including the staff, I believe that that will be our strength. That's not to say that we won't bring someone in. You know, I've, we've got to have a good look and mm. see, you know, what could possibly happen. Um, but I feel, who knows? I mean, you could have a, a wave of injuries, but we're, we're, we've only got so much money anyway to bring someone in. Yeah. So we're not, we, we can't bring loads in. So it's just looking and going, you know, where are we? But what, once Will's back, you know, we then got Will... Um, Will, Ben um, and Dan as centre-backs. We've now seen that Nesta can do it if need be. Um, I know Henry could do it as well. He's in a back three. I know he could. You know, we then got Shea back. Poor Sue's back to what we all hoped Paul would be. So now we're looking healthy at full-backs. Um, I'm more than confident and happy to say if I needed to, Jack Curry could come come back and be outstanding for us. Um, so and then, you know, midfield was strong. It's just possibly that top end of the pitch, you know, we need to look at, I think, personally. But but by the same token, we need to make sure if we bring them, someone in, they're the right person, they're the right fit, and they're going to add to what we're, what we're doing. And I know my niece is going to be gutted that Aaron won't be around for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. She's a big fan. So just very quickly, before we finish off, just quick one-word answers, if I can, Mark. Um, performance that's pleased you the most this season? Um, there's so many yeah it's, it's many. if I say one that's not a win it sounds such a naff answer but, <laughs> but I'll have to I'll have to go with him I think because of yeah I'll have to go with him mm -hmm. um, I, feel, I feel I feel it's going to take us to places you know 
Yeah. That's not a one word answer, is it, Nick? Sorry, I'm not playing. That's right. No, no, you crack on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with him. Let's go with him. Okay. Um, and strongest opponent, in your opinion, so far this season? Rotherham. Fair enough. Can't, can't wait to play him again, though. <laughs> Down at Plough Lane, yes, definitely. And very quickly, just final question. Um, if you could make one change in football at the moment, what would that change be? One change in football, I as in, As in the game or just the industry itself? Absolutely anything, either. Work towards... Work towards having players have to play within a certain radius of your club and you're only allowed so many internationals. Do you know what? I think one day we'll have to get you back on and investigate that further because I like the sound of that a lot. <laughs> that appeals to me greatly. <laughs> I was looking at it the other day, just to, to, I was looking at our oh. players and I was thinking how many actual local lads, you know mm. what I mean? How many would you go? You know, you look back to the old days when players, you know, you say, oh, you know, in cricket, didn't you? There was a lot of within cricket you had to play, mm. you know, in a certain race. And I was actually thinking, you know, a fair proportion of our squad are just local lads. Yeah. And, and I just thought, how fantastic would it be if we went back to those days where, you know, you was allowed maybe, I don't know, three or four internationals, but but the rest of your squad had to come within a certain radius and get that connection back with the fans. It'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Could not agree with you more. Absolutely. Um, Mark, thank you very much for your time once more yeah. um good luck for the upcoming right, Nick. i haven't seen you for a while you've been watching countdown <laughs> <laughs> i have been watching countdown do you know what practice I've, makes perfect i've nick i've lost the love since since my auntie has got the job and <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've lost the love i loved it when colin you know when colin murray was doing it he so was so to... good I used to get up early and watch it because I leave for work 10 months. So I used to get up and watch it before I left for work. And you're right. You, after a while, it's just practice, isn't it? It is. It yes. Is. You spot how to get the suffixes and the prefixes and the numbers and everything. But I agree with you. Well, Colin Murray biggest, was so good. Uh, so my biggest claim at the moment was that I actually got a numbers one that was really difficult. The two contestants didn't do it. Right, but I, I worked it out the same way that Rachel worked it out, and I, I went to work so happy. I felt like <laughs> <laughs> I do love it when you get something that the contestants don't get. I do enjoy those yeah. moments. Um, yeah. Sorry, mate, I digress. Sorry. <laughs> not at all. Um, as I say, thanks for taking time to speak to us, and um, yeah, have a good Christmas. Cheers, Nick, and to you, Stu, as well. Yeah, same to you, Robert. All right, cheers, fellas.